Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Halal family Welcome to the channel you beautiful people I hope you guys are having yourself uh, a wonderful day In today's video guys we'll be reacting to a video titled 1945 Japan uh, joins the Allies The Indonesian War of Independence Part 1 uh, This video was uh, suggested by S uh, channel Terima kasih Thank you very much Shukran merci For taking the time to send me your recommendation and suggestion the video is by time ghost history and the link is in the description in case you guys wanted to check it out so without further ado guys let's get started with this video nuclear bombs level hiroshima and nagasaki and japan surrenders to the allies in august 1945. world war ii is over but the sudden end of japanese hegemony leaves most of southeast asia in a power vacuum the european powers hope to resume their colonial rule but local people wish to rule themselves this is the case in the dutch east indies indonesia things get violent hmm. it's one of 1945 War of Independence. Welcome to the Indonesian War of Independence, a Time Ghost miniseries that follows that struggle year by year from 1945 to 1949. I'm Indy Nidel. Indonesia became a Dutch colony, the Dutch East Indies, through trade and brutal conquest. The hmm. racist and ultra-violent colonial system relied on fear and suppression. But a small but widely popular Indonesian nationalist movement was eventually launched. If you haven't seen our prologue, which covers it in more than one sentence, and you want to watch that first, the link is in the description. Anyhow, the Dutch forced the Indonesian nationalists into domestic exile, shutting down their movement in the 1930s. I left wow. off just before the Japanese invasion in early 1942. When the Dutch surrendered the colony, any actual respect that the Indonesians have for their former colonial overlords disappears. See, Dutch rule relied on a shock and awe strategy. And when the Dutch are defeated, many bureaucrats and other elite flee or are put in Japanese internment camps. Eventually, all European citizens are removed from society. As wow. the Indonesians see their former bosses being locked up, degraded, or killed by fellow Asians, well, as Indonesian author Pramudia Anantatur recalls, the Japanese severely dent the glory of the white man's realm throughout the archipelago. Wow. See, if the Japanese can throw out the Europeans that easily, then maybe the Indonesians can rule themselves. And if it's up to the Japanese, that might one day be the case, it seems. Under their occupation, nationalism and anti-Western sentiments thrive hmm. at first. The Japanese present themselves as fellow Asian liberators. They permit the use of the Indonesian flag and the national anthem, both of which had been forbidden by the Dutch, wow. although the Japanese would later ban them as well. <laughs> Dutch influence is eradicated, and the Japanese depend on Indonesians to fill the empty administrative and technical positions, which further encourages national confidence. Though seen by some as collaboration, this policy is used by prominent nationalist figures Sukarno and Mohamed Hatta to relaunch their nationalist campaign. In 1942, Japanese commander Hitoshi Imamura asks Sukarno to mobilize support for the Japanese war effort. A mutually <laughs> beneficial relationship unfolds where the nationalists publicly support the occupation in exchange for political concessions and investments in national development. Sukarno publicly recites translated Japanese texts, adds his own bits and pieces and signs off with a Japanese banzai and the crowds love it. And the Japanese think that their ideas of Pan-Asianism are gaining ground in the East Indies. And to a certain extent, that is true. Sukarno's ideals do have much in common with the Japanese. His speeches are filled with anti-Western and anti-imperialist rhetoric. But that same anti-imperialist rhetoric is also underhandedly aimed at the Japanese. Because mm. despite framing their nation as the light of Asia, the Japanese too are an imperialist, racist occupier in need of cheap labor and natural resources. Mm. Their occupation is accompanied by many colonial atrocities committed against the Dutch and Chinese inhabitants, sure, but also against the Indonesians. The UN estimates that the total loss of life during the occupation is 4 million people, wow, 2.4 so cool. of that because of famine in the final two years of occupation. Holy. Furthermore, the Japanese forced roughly 10 million laborers to build things like, like the Burma-Thailand Railway under harsh conditions. A great many locals will die slaving away for yet another imperial occupier. But like, like a sort of double agent, Sukarno maintains a facade of compliance with the regime 
though gaining independence for Indonesia remains at the heart of his actions. He and Hatta mm -hmm. become the directors of the Putera, the center for people's power, through which Indonesians are allowed the administration of schools and teachers, student and sports organizations, and media associations. Trusted with more autonomy than ever permitted by the Dutch, the Indonesians relish the opportunity to represent and govern themselves, if nice. only on a regional scale at first. In the actual government, though, the Japanese eventually do put more power in Indonesian hands. In April 1945, they even give them some legislative power. Sukarno is appointed as head of the Investigating Committee for Preparatory Work for Independence, mainly an advisory body, but one tasked with making national regulations. In the nationalists' eyes, they're preparing the basis of a future Indonesian state. With confidence, Indonesia is manifesting forging a national identity. Furthermore, the occupation aids the development of the country's infrastructure. Radio networks are expanded dramatically, and every city square has radio sets to receive official messages. Nice. Japan also trusts the Indonesians to set up their own military movement. The PETA, wow. P -E -T -A, the Volunteer Army of Defenders of the Fatherland, is founded in 1943 to train Indonesians to defend the country against a possible allied invasion. Troops are drilled with a strict regimen, precise military skill, and anti-Western sentiments. Sukarno persuades the Japanese to let them build this army based on a national spirit, troops of which, he argues, would be the most motivated and effective in resisting foreign invasion. The Putera and the Pita invigorate political and national consciousness among the civilian population, and loyalty to these organizations is fueled by a sense of nationalism and not any enthusiasm for a pan-Asian or Japanese cause. Now, once this becomes clear to the Japanese, the Putera is shut down. Oh, then, wow. on the 15th of August, 1945, the Japanese surrender in World War II comes to an end. Sukarno's opportunity to declare independence has arrived. Almost instantly, the Pita army and armed youth gangs called Pamuda push Sukarno to declare independence before anyone, the Japanese, the Dutch, or the Allies, can act. Sukarno hesitates, though, as he does not want to provoke the Japanese troops there, who assume that their role is to maintain order until the Allies take control. So the next day, in a stunning turn of events, a couple of restlessly eager Pamuda leaders actually kidnap Sukarno and pressure him into announcing Indonesia's independence. Wow. 10 a.m. on August 17th, <clears throat> Sukarno, with Mohamed Hatta beside him, declares the independence of the Republic of Indonesia in front of a huge crowd. The declaration wow. reads that, we the people of Indonesia hereby declare the independence of Indonesia, matters which concern the transfer of power and other things will be executed by careful means and in the shortest possible time. His words are pretty non-threatening, speaking of a hmm. transfer of power rather than a coup or a revolution. The next day, Sukarno takes office as president with Hatta as vice president. Nice. They get on with the business of writing a constitution. They hmm. seem to be in a good place with their Japanese trained troops at their disposal and the Dutch nowhere to be seen. There are around 66 army battalions, about 120,000 soldiers. The Heiho, the Indonesian Auxiliary Forces, amount to another 25,000 troops. Plus, there's a lightly armed Indonesian police force of 24,000. People press Sukarno to mobilize all these forces, but he urges everyone to remain cool and calm and maintain discipline. Hmm. Thing is, Although they haven't been legitimized or authorized by Sukarno, the revolutionary youth, Pamuda, continue to assemble in the streets. On September 19th, a huge crowd of 200,000 people attend ah, a Pamuda rally. Sukarno successfully sense. diffuses the situation. Now, you may wonder why all these people are rallying and demonstrating. What's the big deal? They declared independence, right? Well, believe it or not, the Japanese stay in charge. Didn't see that coming, did you? Wow. Well, the terms of their surrender state that the Japanese are responsible for maintaining order. And even with ideas of national freedom blazing through the country, many Indonesians continue to respect the authority of the Japanese occupiers. Two months after the Japanese surrender, they are still the main source of order in the country. The Japanese flag is flown outside of official buildings, and the Japanese military police still patrol the streets and the Japanese actively battle Pamuda 
multiple times in central Java, wow. killing thousands of Indonesians and taking hundreds of casualties themselves. Wow. And it's oh. not just the Japanese occupiers who clash with Indonesian nationalists. The Dutch slowly but steadily are returning to their homes as they are released from the Japanese internment camps. Hmm. Not recognizing the Indonesian Republic's declaration of independence, they raise their Dutch flags. The Pemudu do not take this lightly though, hmm. and more violence breaks out. By 1945, the Pemuda have over 25,000 members, and with Japanese weapons, they are a force with which to be reckoned. Wow. Brutal, racially motivated violence against Dutch, Chinese, British, and Japanese sweeps the islands, and Indonesians, who are suspected of collaborating against the Indonesian nation, are also targeted, again leading to the deaths of thousands in a period known as the Bersiap. In retaliation, Dutch Indonesians and Moluccans target local Indonesian communities with violence of their own. Though thorough research does not exist and sources differ on numbers, it is estimated that the Bersiap claims the lives of roughly 5,000 people. Sukarno's hopes for a peaceful transition of power really vaporize as 1945 nears its end. Under the command of British Admiral Louis Mountbatten, in charge of overseeing the transfer of power in East Asia as Supreme Allied Commander in Southeast Asia, the Allies intend to regain control of the Dutch East Indies. On the 21st of November, Mountbatten telegraphs the British Chiefs of Staff that, I gave the Japanese the task of maintaining law and order pending the arrival of the Allied occupation forces. Hmm. This they have failed to do. British forces are sent in to do the job, as the Dutch military is in a shambles after the German occupation in Europe. Wow. Or, as Mountbatten puts it, no really adequate Dutch forces are yet in sight. Their internal security battalions are neither equipped nor trained for proper warfare. Thus, I do not see how the Dutch forces can take over from us within measurable time if their arrival will involve conflict with 100,000 armed Indonesians and the active hostility of most of the remaining 43 millions of inhabitants. On the 25th of October, the British land 6,000 troops in Surabaya to evacuate European citizens. Hmm. Now, that city in East Java has been taken over by the Pemuda. And in addition to the now 100,000 strong Pemuda forces, 20,000 Japanese trained members of the Indonesian army, now reorganized into the People's Security Army, hold the city. Even though the British do technically capture Surabaya within three days, the Indonesians, supported by the local populace and having an overwhelming advantage in numbers, keep fighting them for weeks. In a bizarre twist, some Japanese units now even fight alongside the British against the Indonesian nationalists, while others support the Indonesians. In more dramatic events on October 30th, British Brigadier Malaby travels through the city under a white flag to propose a ceasefire. Wow. The accounts on what exactly happens are unclear, but Malaby is caught in a shootout and killed. Oh. The British oh. are furious, and the Battle of Surabaya picks up speed. The fighting concludes at the end of November, leaving up to 15,000 Indonesians dead. Wow. If one thing is now clear, it is that Indonesian independence will not come easily. Towards the end of 1945, the Indonesians try to consolidate and organize. Sultan Sharir becomes prime minister, and Sudirman is appointed the commander of the army. Hmm. Historians will one day describe him as possessing cowboy irregularity and desperado quality. Dutch troops, upon their arrival, are faced with a different nation from the one they lost three years ago to the Japanese. The Japanese occupation nurtured anti-Western sentiments, but in doing so, embedded national spirit within the Indonesian people. Wow. Right now, the Dutch are totally unprepared to defend their colony from the Indonesian people's growing demands for freedom. But this is just the beginning. The Dutch will still try to re-establish their control over the Dutch East Indies, while the Indonesians will refuse to let go of lands for which they have paid in blood. From here on in, the Indonesian War of Independence will only get grittier, more violent, and ever more bitter. Tens of thousands will die in an attempt to reset the colonial clock. Indonesia. I don't know, guys. There's a lot of people that lost uh, their life to, you know, to get independence uh, for Indonesia, right? And and uh, basically protect their their home, uh, homeland, motherland, their people. 
uh, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive uh, the sins of our brothers and sisters who have passed away and, uh, you know, they're defending uh, their home and uh, give their uh, family uh, sabr and grant them genital uh, firdaus. It's a bit uh, sad to see because, you know, this had happened in 1945 and unfortunately we still see war around the world. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring uh, peace around the world so we can all uh, live in harmony with uh, one another. So thank you very much guys for suggesting this video. Smash that like button for Indonesia's independence. And as always, thank you very much for all your love and support. I hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day. Take care of yourself and your family, inshallah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Assalamu